Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for an MP webinar covering quiet quitting, what employers need to know. I'm Katie Kreider, Marketing Specialist here at MP. For those of you joining us on a webinar for the first time, MP is a full service human capital management company. We offer a complete suite of products and services to support organizations through the entire employee life cycle, including recruiting, HR, payroll, benefits administration, time and attendance, and compliance assistance. We support our clients with cutting edge technical solutions, as well as proactive, reliable service and deep HR and payroll expertise. At MP, we are wired for HR and help our clients succeed by aligning their people strategy with their business goals. I'm excited to introduce your presenters for today's program, Alexandra Michaelin and Jen Saray. Andra is an HR partner at MP and provides strategic HR consult consultation to its clients. She has over 10 years of experience in HR and before joining MP, worked internally in HR in various nonprofit and for-profit organizations. She has a BA in business with a focus in HR from the University of Miami, Florida. She is a SHRM certified HR professional. Jen is also a SHRM certified HR partner at MP she received her BA from Clark University and previously managed HR for the Northeast Division of a national nonprofit organization. Jen loves building relationships with her clients while helping them meet their HR goals. And just a few quick housekeeping issues before we get started here today. If you would like to submit a question during the program, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. And we will be sending out a recording of the webinar later today along with the slides. So with that, I'm going to hand the mic off to Jen. Thank you so much, Katie, and good afternoon, everyone. We're happy to have you here with us today. Uh, before we get started, we do want to let you know that this training is intended for educational and informational purposes. And while we hope that you learn a lot today, we're not attorneys and the information we talk about today shouldn't be construed as legal advice. So uh, today we'll be reviewing what exactly is quiet quitting, what prompts quiet quitting, how to identify quiet quitting, and what managers can, can do about it, what steps you can take. And then we'll open up the uh, floor to any questions that you have. So with that, let's get started. So maybe you've tuned into our webinar today because you've heard the term quiet quitting floating around and you were curious to learn more, or you're struggling with employees who are disengaged, burnt out, and uninterested in tackling new challenges at work. And if you're in that second category, you're not alone. A poll from Gallup found that quiet quitters make up at least 50% of the US workforce, and that number is probably higher than reported. So this is definitely a problem um, that a lot of companies are facing, you know, regardless of industry, regardless of size. Um, so next, let's talk about, you know, what is quiet quitting? So the term quiet quitting rose in popularity this year because of trends on TikTok. Um, but the concept behind it has been around for a while. And it actually has nothing to do with quitting a job. And in the past, we would refer to this as employees who are actively disengaged. And for many, quiet quitting is about setting distinct boundaries between work and life. And, you know, the pandemic definitely changed the way many employees feel about work. With so many workplaces abruptly going remote, all of a sudden employees had more face time with their families and more time for their personal interests without a commute. And then also less connection to their workplace, coworkers, and the work itself. And we've seen many businesses struggle with bringing employees back to the office because employees have shifted their priorities and attitudes about work. And there's also less willingness to engage in the so-called hustle culture. And quiet quitting is also a way for employees to avoid burnout without leaving a job. A survey conducted by Resume Builder found that eight out of, a, eight, eight out of 10 quiet quitters are burnt out and 21% are doing the bare minimum required of their job. 
But the good news is the survey also found um, that nine out of 10 quiet quitters could be incentivized to work harder. So later in the presentation, Andra is going to touch, uh, touch base on what managers can do to try to turn things around with an employee who's displaying signs of quiet quitting. And alternatively, quiet quitting could also be doing the bare minimum that's required of the job until an employee is ready to make a move, possibly to a new job outside of the company. And some real life examples people have given of uh, ways they've they've uh, they've uh, practiced quiet quitting include spending uh, half an hour in the break room, talking to coworkers, or letting the phone ring three or four times before answering it. And you may have heard some of these other terms that essentially mean the same thing as quiet quitting: uh, reverse hustle, purposeful disengagement or coasting, uh, coasting culture. So just know these all, these terms are kind of interchangeable and we're kind of talking about the same thing here. So now let's talk about what prompts quiet quitting. <clears throat> employees quiet quit for a variety of reasons. So if you have multiple employees who are displaying signs of quiet quitting, don't assume they're all coming from the same place. For some employees, Quiet quitting can be a way to deal with burnout. Many businesses are still struggling with the aftermath of the Great Recession, with recruitment and retention continuing to be a major pain, major pain points. We also want to think about how this is, has impacted the employees who have stuck with their employers, having to pick up the extra work every time a coworker leaves or a position goes unfilled. And some employees want to change positions and are actively looking for another job, and that can prompt disengagement because they feel like they already have one foot out the door. So why would they do anything extra? Other employees may feel like their efforts haven't been valued. So there isn't any reason to go above and beyond. You know, and if someone's thinking quite quitting might be for me, I would expect that they have in the past invest, invested a lot of themselves in their work and feel like some of their self-worth is derived from their contribution to their employer. An article from The Atlantic reported that for folks who got their uh, sense of meaning and purpose from work, quiet quitting might come with a sense of disillusionment, loss, and grief. And some employees may be influenced by others. If they see their coworkers working hard and not getting recognition, or employees, uh, coworkers who are maybe on the other end, kind of slacking off a bit and it seems to go unnoticed, there's no consequence, they might think it's smart to put in the least amount of effort uh, if it's going to have the same results. And employees may want more out of their job, whether that's recognition, value, money, or just having interesting, meaningful work. Boredom can lead to disengagement. Doing the same thing day in and day out without any opportunities to learn and grow can absolutely prompt quiet quitting. There was always, a, always this idea that if you worked hard, you'll get a promotion or a pay raise. But if those things never materialized, employees may feel like there's no point in continuing to try and put in extra effort. So now I'm going to turn the mic over to Andrea to tell us how, um, how managers can identify employees who are quiet quitting and what they can do about it. Jen, um, so talking about how to identify quiet quitting. Um, the biggest thing with this is comparing an employee to what their baseline normally is. So, you know, every person is different. So if you have a, an employee who's normally quiet, that doesn't necessarily mean that they quiet quit, right? Um, they, it's looking at a, a, an employee who maybe before was volunteering, raising their hand to go above and beyond, and now all of a sudden is more reserved um, and, and pulling back. So if an employee seems removed or quieter than normal, you know, some things to ask yourself is, are, is the employee usually outgoing and bubbly, but over the past month or week, um, days become more withdrawn? Has this change coincided with an increase in their workload, a difficult project, or an extended period of high volume of work? That could be an indicator that maybe it is something that's um, uh, quiet quitting. Alternatively, um, you know, this could also be something that personal that's going on in their life and they seem a little bit more reserved. So um, you can be looking at that and but always know that things can be going on in their personal life, too. So don't always assume that it's it's quite quitting. 
Um, but things in the personal life can uh, can lead to quiet quitting and, and affect their work performance as well. So I, a big indicator I would say is if an employee is now saying no to additional tasks. So sometimes employees have too much on their plate and they, they need to push back a little bit, but um, employees who are self-identifying as quiet quitters, um, they maybe believe that they their job shouldn't be the central focus of their life and uh, they might be resisting the expectation of going above and beyond. And so that's something to be looking for to identify a quiet quitter. So what can managers do if you, know, you have identified somebody as quiet quitting or you want to prevent quiet quitting in the first place? Um, you know, quiet quitting is happening. You know, the, the polls show that 50% of employees are quiet quitting. But the good news is that employers and specifically managers often have the power to prevent it or re-engage those employees. So one way you can do this is by setting up regular check-ins with employees. Having frequent conversations with employees is the best way to counteract quiet quitting. And it's simple, right? You set up a, a weekly meeting, monthly meeting, depending on you know, how many employees you have, but often a weekly or biweekly is a good way to go about it. Um, and open communication, you know, mentoring, quality supervision, and encouragement are helpful. And just having direct and honest conversations. So as I said before, you know, Somebody could have something going on in their personal life um, that makes them seem reserved. If you're having open conversations and asking them about their personal life, just asking how are you, if they are open to sharing, you might learn more and better. And, and this also helps better understand employees' day-to-day -day assignments as well. So this can help on a lot of different levels. Providing timely feedback. So providing prompt feedback to your direct reports gives them the opportunity to improve their performance. So if somebody seems like they are pulling back or um, quiet quitting, sometimes our first instinct is to just monitor the situation or ask other people if, some, if they know about something that's going on. But talking to the employee and say, you know, usually you raise your hand for this. Um, and I've, I've, I've noticed that you're, you're pulling back. Is there something going on or something that, uh, do you have too much work on your plate? Um, especially when it comes to performance issues, employees shouldn't be hearing about performance issues for the first time during their annual review. So you should be providing both positive and constructive feedback as it occurs. Setting measurable goals and conducting performance reviews. This is another thing that managers can do. So clearly setting and managing expectations and goals and creating these goals and stretch assignments in a collaborative way. So a lot of employees, you know, if something is coming down to them from up high that they don't understand why they're working on it, it can lead to them not being as interested in um, achieving. So if you work with them on, you know, what are their professional goals and how can those um, contribute to the organization, they might be more interested in going above and beyond. And then working to monitor progress efficiently to keep the employee or your entire team on course towards achieving those goals. Um, and if you have an employee who thinks that they're doing enough, but you think that they aren't, and this is often happening with quiet quitting, that you can look at their job description and say, okay, you know, things have changed with this. What can we change about your job description? You know, these are the new things that your job description does entail. Uh, and another thing that you can do is either create a performance review process, or you can enhance um, a performance review process that you already have. So HR partners at MP can also partner with your organization on working on these, um, or you can work with your HR team to, to make sure that your performance reviews are encompassing all of the right criteria um, and keeping employees on track. Next is uh, assess engagement. So organizations should consider getting a pulse on employee engagement, whether it's through these regular check-ins or um, through anonymous or named surveys. So MP utilizes Microsoft Forms for this and can help build out surveys with clients. Um, the one thing that I would always suggest when it comes to surveys is you, sh you should only you know, give a survey if you actually plan to act on the feedback. Um, because 
a lot of, you know, when you're asked to do a lot of surveys and you don't feel like anything comes out of it, it, it makes you not as interested in, in giving feedback. Um, next, managers can um, ensure compensation, bonus, incentive programs are all competitive. So you can review, recalibrate employee recognition, uh, appreciation, bonus incentive programs. Um, so for employees who exceed expectations, you can do things like considering time off, um, making sure that they have a clearer pathway to promotion, increased monetary or non-monetary compensation and perks, depending on what your organization um, can accommodate. And so one of the things that you can do is compare salaries to benchmarks. So MP can assist with this as well. And this is something that we do. We look at benchmarks to see if a, based on somebody's experience, um, their location, the organization's size, and their position, um, if they're in line with uh, their salary range. Um, and then the other thing that I would mention with this is that the pandemic added a mortality factor and the idea of you know, good things coming to those who wait is a little bit less applicable. And so what I mean by that is if your company is you know, living on this quarterly basis of finances, for example, um, it's hard to you know, say to an employee to live on a yearly basis. So at this annual review, you, know, you didn't get a promotion this year, but next year we, we, we see it coming. It feels a lot more like right now, employees are looking at what can the company do for me right now? Um, and especially with the current climate that employees are a little bit more in the driver's seat as we have um, so many vacancies and openings in, in the job market. So thinking about if it's not a promotion, what else you can be doing. Next tip for managers is providing value to employee work. So these are you know, some of the non-monetary things because quiet quitters can feel like this is just a job and I'm going to do my work and nothing else. But if you're giving them more than just a salary, they'll likely want to give more back as well. So employers should try to create a culture where employees feel like they're encouraged to put work in perspective versus making work their entire lives. Um, it's important to recognize that people can be engaged and motivated at work without needing to revolve their life and identity around it. Because employees need to see this value in their work and feel valued. So people are fulfilled by gaining new skills and experiences, having greater control over their jobs and feeling genuinely appreciated. Um, and again, money is not the only factor. What about other levers like the vision and um, the mission of the company or the relationships with colleagues. Um, other meaningful changes come from making workloads more sustainable and making sure employees feel a forward sense of progress beyond just career development opportunities. So for example, making workloads more sustainable. If employees feel like they are being asked to do too much, how can you help? And so this doesn't mean you have to take on their work necessarily. Um, but can you help them evaluate their job tasks and eliminate anything that's redundant or irrelevant? Learning and leadership opportunities, so promoting this as much as possible, um, and promoting an environment of learning, discussing other available benefits or opportunities that your organization might have, uh, like training, mentoring, supporting educational goals. Uh, because it's important for employers to provide workers with ample opportunities to learn new skills, expand their knowledge, and collaborate with different colleagues and teams, offering the chance to innovate, run with new ideas, and take the lead on meaningful projects are all strategies that can help transform quiet quitters back into active contributors to the organization. And again, not all of these need to be a tuition reimbursement program if your organization doesn't have that. It can be things like finding somebody that might be a good mentor, talking to them about their professional goals and how um, you can help them achieve those. Be an example of work-life balance. So managers can underscore the benefits of taking time off from work, for example, or um, be a model for work-life balance it's because sometimes when we have employees who are quiet quitting, our inclination is to start grinding even more to be an example of what the employee should be doing and how much work they should be doing. And really this can be counterproductive because if the employee has decided to 
pull back and they don't want um, work to be the center of their lives, they see you doing that. It doesn't necessarily um, make them want to work more. But if you are being a good example um, of work-life balance, if they can understand that you're a human being, you're treating them like a human being, you understand that they have competing priorities um, in their home life or personal life um, and kind of meet them where they are. And on top of that, being a good example for work-life balance is actually twofold because managers might be going through the same stressors that employees are going through. So you need to make sure that you have the tools to deal with, um, deal with your workload. You can also emphasize the importance of employees collaborating with you to create flexible work arrangements um, if this is applicable to your organization and help them find more everyday balance. Next, give recognition. So for employees who are exceeding expectations, consider genuine thank yous, expressions of gratitude, um, both public and private. And you know, whatever makes sense for, for the way that they, um, they interact. But, you know, a lot of times we have so much going on that it's hard to remember today to give recognition. And so be specific about the recognition that you're giving. And finally, what manager can, can do is they can also, if they can take measures into their own hands uh, to terminate quiet quitters when it's necessary. So Hopefully we've given you tips to avoid this, but when quiet quitting becomes a burden to the company, other employees and business goals, termination is a last resort. So to reduce the risk of wrongful termination suits or the appearance of discrimination in organization should document prior offenses and violations. Um, it's not always an option based on the offense, but best practice in uh, most situations. And organizations should work with their HR or you can work with HR partners like myself and Jen um, and the HR partners at MP to follow progressive disciplinary action. And MP also recommends um, consulting an employment lawyer to advise on reducing legal risk. So those are the things that managers should be doing, but what should managers be avoiding when it comes to quiet quitting? Micromanaging or over-supervising. Um, you know, we shouldn't buy into the social media phenomenon too much and micromanage to overcompensate by, you know, monitoring keystrokes, mouse movements, other things like that. Usually this isn't the answer. Control doesn't lend itself to innovation or creativity, and it can actually alienate employees. Um, instead, you can establish specific check-in times, like I mentioned in the previous slide. Um, regular check-ins are the best way to, to counteract. Um, and to make sure that an assignment is on track in order to give an employee more autonomy. And with that, if your organization is dealing with, the, with return to office, more face time in the office is not necessarily the silver bullet to eliminating quiet quitting. Um, employees can quiet quit in the office and they might even be pushing back more if they preferred working from home because what's different now is that a lot of employees have experienced working from home and felt very strongly that they were doing a great job from home and don't understand why they need to be back in the office. Um, so just keep this in mind if you're trying to come up with an RTO strategy. Uh, managers should avoid focusing on details rather than goals. So managers have to shift their focus to the big picture. Um, and are you measuring productivity well? If not, how can you go to your employee and tell them that they aren't doing enough? You know, sometimes, especially if they are working from home and you're working from home and you can't see exactly what they're doing, the calls that they're making, the emails that they're sending, um, come up with good ways to measure these, these things that are collaborative with them or goals with them. And so, as we discussed in the previous slide, monitoring progress efficiently to keep the employee or the entire team on course towards achieving goals is the best way to go about this. Next, assigning work outside of normal hours. So refreshed, motivated employees need time off every week to recharge. So whenever possible, managers should hold calls until the work week and use email options like delayed delivery, for example, to send a message later or during work hours. 
Um, this isn't always possible, but um, I know, for example, I, I had a, a manager once tell me, um, you know, I work on the weekend. I'm going to be sending you emails on the weekends. However, I don't expect you to answer those until work hours. And so just managing those expectations, if that is how you feel, or if you if there are emergencies that are happening on the weekend and you do need the employee to, to respond. Blaming upper management for unpopular decisions. Managers should avoid this. Um, and sometimes it's trying to save face with employees and appear on their side. Managers will do this. Um, but if you disagree with a policy or decision, talk with your manager about your concerns privately. Um, and you should be explaining the policies clearly so employees understand why they're being introduced, even if they do not agree with them. Providing preferential treatment. So, and this is in all cases, um, whether we're talking about quiet quitting or in general, um, if you have some employees that you feel more positively about, um, this should not be evident to other employees. If someone has gone above and beyond, you should give them recognition, but sometimes quiet quitters might be disengaged because they feel like their accomplishments are not recognized or they're fighting an uphill battle because they are not the favorite. So keep that in mind. And managers should also um, make sure that they're being reactive. Um, uh, you should avoid being reactive um, rather than proactive. So although being reactive can be necessary in some circumstances, when it co comes to quiet quitting, hopefully we've laid out some tools to actively prevent it. Um, being proactive can be the difference between turning someone's performance around and feeling like your only option is termination. Um, so I just want to come full circle and say it again that, you know, quiet quitting is happening um, based on polls, statistics that we've seen. But the good news, again, is employers and specifically managers often have the power to prevent it or turn it around. So hopefully you learned something um, today, but um, we're going to open it to the Q and A, and I'll pass it back to Jen um, for any questions that you might have. Jen, if you're there, you are on mute. Oh, thank you. So sorry, <laughs> I'm talking away. So thank you very much. Um, thanks, Sandra. Appreciate that. Um, so I was just saying that um, we, we didn't get too many questions, um, but w one common question was just asking if participants will um, will uh, be getting copies of the slides. And yeah, so after the presentation, um, everyone will receive a copy of this live recording as well as a physical copy of the slide. So if you're the kind of person that likes to print, print uh, out notes and keep them somewhere, you will get a, a, a copy about that. Um, and then someone else asked if this qualifies for CPE or if a certificate will be issued. Um, I don't believe so. Um, I, actually, maybe that's a question Katie could answer as well. I don't believe that uh, we we send out a certificate along with the marketing documents. Katie, could would you mind just um, clarifying that one? Yeah, absolutely. So we don't offer certifications for our webinars, but we will, again, we'll send out all those resources um, for you to be able to have after the webinar. Okay, thanks so much. Um, and we got a question about quiet firing. Um, curious, did you, did you read anything about quiet firing when you were doing your um, research for, for today's presentation, Andra? I think I saw, saw that term, not, not as much. I have to admit, I'm, I'm very interested in this question. I did not read about quiet firing, so I, I will look into this. Yes, thank you for that that tip. So we'll we'll uh, look into some quiet firing, and we'll have to report back to you. Um, and and we have another great question: How do you get this on the radar for executives and leaders? So yes, so oftentimes it's the first level managers, um, right, who kind of. I, I think know what's going on. They're kind of first line managers are really the eyes and ears of the business, right? And I say the same thing when I do 
harassment training with managers, right? Sometimes, you know, executive and leaders don't know um, that this is going on. Um, and so they re really rely on those first level managers, again, the eyes and ears of the business to let them know when these things are going on. So I think it's it's important to train the, your first level managers to be sharing and kind of reporting up to then their managers or sharing this with HR. And HR can really be, um, you know, your, your internal HR can be the one to also kind of present this to your executives and leaders. Um, because again, they might not really understand um, the impact and how there can there could be some initiatives you could be doing internally that could help prevent this or turn it around. All right, I heard um, another question here. I've heard that quiet quitting is a really offensive phrase to employees, particularly younger generations as they feel like the responsibility should be on managers and employers to create better work environments. Yep. Do you suggest using this phrase directly with employees and pointing out observations like stepping back? That's, I, I really like that one, um, Andra. Um, and I, I kind of agree. And to be honest, when I first heard about quiet quitting, my first thought was, well, wait a minute, is this just people setting healthy boundaries? Because <laughs> um, I, I, the the term quiet quitting really didn't resonate with me. It really sound to me, it initially sounded like, you know, set, setting boundaries, although, you know, there, there are some um, aspects of it, right, where maybe, you know, we do need to talk to employees about their performance. But yeah, I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't recommend using the term quiet quitting if you are kind of addressing um, behaviors with the employee. Um, no, I would, I would be more specific, you know, as, as Andrew said, you know, um, you know, I you know, normally, you know, I noticed, you know, in the meeting today, um, you know, usually you volunteered from when I offer this type of opportunity and, and notice you haven't been doing that lately. Is something going on? Um, I would keep it more specific to the situation. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think that this is, you know, we're giving this presentation on quiet quitting because this is the the term that's going around. But, um, you know, in these conversations with your employees, it's right. It's not a gotcha. I see you're quiet quitting. It's more of a, you know, what's going on with you? You know, I, I've noticed this and and what can I do and and to to help? Absolutely. Um Here's another um, interesting question. Um, do you do you find that new hires quietly quit more than tenured employees? I'm trying to remember if I saw some of the statistics because I did see some interesting statistics that um, men were um, more likely to quite quit than women. I was like, oh, that's interesting. But I don't remember seeing a statistic if it, if it was new hires more than tenured employees. I mean, I think right now, um, you know, there are a lot of recruitment and retention challenges. Um, so I think in turnover in general, it, it's the, you know, some of the newer hires um, having a harder time retaining, but I, I don't have the stats on if, if quiet quitting is um, affecting more, more uh, tenured employees. I did see an interesting statistic though, actually, um, that it seemed to be um, maybe not the younger workers that, you know, some might assume, um, not the kind of Gen Z workers, but it seemed like it was more um, kind of the millennial aged um, kind of thir 30s and 40s, which I thought was an inter interesting statistic. Um, let's see. Um, another interesting question here. What percentage of quiet quitting is attributable to moonlighting, which seems to be rampant following the pandemic? An expanded application of remote work. Um, that's a that's a great question, and I I didn't see um, I didn't see any statistics about that in my research. Did you see anything about moonlighting or kind of employees taking on second third jobs or a side hustle as some call it? Did you see yeah, any of that I in Poandra? I, I didn't, but it's been coming up much more anecdotally um, when I've been talking to managers about disengaged employees. And um, and it does seem like a little bit the newer generation is kind of thinking if they can work from home, um, can they be you know doing multiple jobs at the same time? So it has actually come up um, a little bit more, and I do think it does lead to quiet quitting as well because employees you know used to you had one job and that's what you um, you focused on so you had your job in your personal life and now employees sometimes are saying well I could actually have two jobs and I'm I can semi quiet quit on both of them um, and just do the bare minimum to get oh, by wow. so I do think it is attributable 
attributable to moonlighting often. So something to think about if you are hiring remote employees, for example, um, and also something to, to think about if, yeah, if you see somebody pulling back or, or even if they're starting a job and they seem like they're kind of not um, all there. Yeah, that's, um, that's really interesting. Cause I, you know, my thought, you know, normally I recommend when I'm working on handbooks with, with clients is, you know, there's a outside employment policy that kind of talks about, you know, ensuring that, you know, understanding that, you know, many people have a second, second job, but, and, you know, that's fine as long as it's not a conflict of interest or, you know, it's not going to impact your, your work here. It's not going to be excuse for, you know, your performance here, or um, you're not being available for the shifts you signed up for, but uh, surprised to hear that maybe people would be um, quiet quitting on both jobs. That's really right. interesting. Maybe yeah. <laughs> just meeting the bare minimum on two jobs rather than maybe dedicating all your time to your side hustle, maybe, and then right. kind of quite quitting on your main job. That's really interesting. So yes, I'm sure it's all happening in different different degrees, right? Um, and, and then another question, let's see, is quite quitting more common among Gen Z millennials versus Gen X boomers. And the stat, the stat I saw, it looks like it is millennials, which I believe is like, Oh gosh, I think they're the old oldest millennials are kind of in their forties now. So I think it's like maybe um early thirties, late twenties. And it's funny because if you look at definitions of the generations, there's not really one set um range. Some some people think uh, millennials are um uh early or like 1980 and other people say it's mid mid 80s. So it's hard it's hard to say. But um it, from what I read when I was looking at some um, articles, it did say kind of millennials were the, um, that age range, which is interesting because if you think about it, people in that age range, you know, 30s, 40s, they might have young children, right? So maybe they experienced during the pandemic, you know, daycare closures, hard time finding childcare, um, you know, then kind of working from home and being able to be maybe near their children or maybe parents that are starting to age. Um, and, and they're looking for a little bit more flexibility in their work, right? So maybe it's a little bit harder for them to physically go into an office five days a week, or they're just not feeling that they are able to, you know, maybe go above and beyond in those ways. So I thought that was interesting. And then um, another interesting question here, is there any particular industry or or level that we're seeing quite quitting happening? Did you see anything about a particular industry, Andrew, when you were doing any of your research or um, all level employee? Really? All okay. Levels. And that yeah. is what, that's what's so, I think, um, that's why we could put on a presentation about this because it's, it's not universal. Just one in, yeah, it's not just one industry. It's not just one level. It's not necessarily just, um, you know, one generation. And so that I thought that was the most interesting thing that I read was that it was, yeah, no industry is exempt from this. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, you have to be thinking about what can your um, organization contribute and how do you, uh, how do you look at this? Yeah, that's that's interesting. I was curious because I, I didn't see a, a specific industry named. I kind of thought it's it seemed like it was really everyone everyone was impacted. So yeah, that's great. Well, this is this is wonderful. Thank you all so much for all of the great questions. Um, I think we were able to get to um, majority of them. I apologize if there are any we missed. They've been kind of coming in rapid fire, so we're trying to just scroll through and get them all. Um, but we hope you learned a lot from this presentation and you're walking away with some information that you can share with leaders at your organization. So with that, I will turn it back over to Katie. Amazing. Thank you so much, Jen and Andrew. We really appreciate your time and your expertise. Um, so if you would like to learn more about MP's HR services and for 2023 and more and hoping to navigate some of these um, waters, you can visit us at mp.hr. Dot com and or you can give us a call at 774-266-6497. Be sure to join us next week on our upcoming webinar covering hiring remote employees, best practices, compliance, and HR tools. To visit our website, visit our website to register and to see the full calendar of upcoming events and available resources. Again, we will be sending out a recording of today's webinar along with the presentation slides this afternoon. Thank you again for joining us and have a terrific day.